بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأزكى التسليم على مبايف رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to Hadith class Today inshallah we will discuss the sixth book of the Sunnah which is Sunan Ibn Majah We have Sahih al-Bukhari Sahih Muslim Sunan Abi Dawood Jami' al-Tirmidhi Sunan al-Nasai and now we have Sunan Ibn Majah and we will take a brief glimpse and we will discuss only the introduction the biography of the Imam and the book itself his name is Muhammad Ibn Yazid Ibn Majah Al-Qazwini this is the name of the Imam Muhammad Ibn Yazid Ibn Majah Al-Qazwini I don't know if you know Qazwin Qazwin is in Russia nowadays there is a great lake big lake they say it is the biggest closed lake in the world which is Bahar Qazwin that's where he is from and you notice most of the scholars they came from that area they are not Arab Imam al-Bukhari Imam Muslim Abu Dawood all of them so he was born in the year 209 of Hijrah and he died in the year 273 I want you to compare the years of birth and death this will give you a good idea about the Imams their life and their death when they were born most of them were contem contemporary but the difference is their efforts, their traveling. Where did each one of them go? Now, scholars who mention his biography, they say that he loved knowledge from an early age. And he started traveling early. So he met with the shuyukh in Iraq, Asham, or Damascus, and in Egypt. Now, if you noticed, we mentioned this several times, those three areas. Why? Nowadays, if someone wanted to study Islam, what do we tell him? Where to go? Medina. Medina University has a reputation now. What else? Al-Azhar, right? These are well-known places. The same thing at their time. Iraq, including Al-Basra, Al-Kufa and Baghdad. It was the center because that was the capital of the Islamic State. What about Damascus? The same thing. It was the previous capital and there were many scholars. What about Egypt? Also, it was a center. It was like the Western civilization of the Muslim Ummah. So these were the known places. And that's where you, you find scholars. So he went to those places. He took from the companions of Imam Malik, rahimahullah, and from Al-Layth ibn Sa'd. Al-Layth ibn Sa'd is a contemporary to Imam Malik. He is a well-known scholar. Abu Bakr ibn Abi Shayba, also another well-known scholar. Have you heard his name before, Abu Bakr ibn Abi Shayba? Yes, where? I know in hadith, where? What book? Who is Abu Bakr ibn Abi Shayba? Hmm? Father of? No? No, your way. See, you forget, and that does not make me happy. Imam Muslim narrated in his book over 10% from this Imam. He's the biggest Sheikh of Imam Muslim, Rahimahullah. You always find, almost in every book, Hadathana Abu Bakr ibn Abi Shayba. Okay? You need to be familiar with those names. Now, Imam Ibn Majah, rahimahullah, did not write only one book. He wrote several books. 
one book in tafsir. And that book was commended by Imam Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah. Imam Ibn Kathir, the famous interpreter, the famous scholar, the scholar that we study his book in tafsir, he liked his book very much about tafsir. Also, he wrote a book about the chronicle of the companions, Tariq Sahaba, about their history. Also, it was a beautiful book. But he was very well known because of his book of Sunan, Sunan Ibn Majah. Now we come to his book. The main issue was, do we include his book to the five books or not? Now that's a benchmark. That's very high status. Now when we say the six books, are they the only books in Sunnah of the Messenger Wasallam? There are many other books. Musnad of Imam Ahmad, Sahih ibn Hibban, Sahih ibn Khuzayma. Why then we mention his book? There is something unique. Just like when we say Academy Award or Nobel Prize or this, the highest prizes, not anyone takes it. So some scholars did not consider his book as the sixth book of Sunnah. Why? They said his book includes many weak and forged ahadith. This is an issue that was not with the other books. Now in Sunan Abi Dawood, in Sunan al-Tirmidhi, and even in Sunan al-Nasai, there are some weak ahadith, but their weakness is not that much. It is light weakness. And they are not that much ahadith, very few. While you look at the Sunan of Ibn Majah, you find many ahadith narrated from people who are accused of lying, or very weak. And that will lower the value of the book. And therefore, some scholars said his book is not worthy to be mentioned or to, atta to be attached to those books. Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, Sunan Abi Dawood, Sunan Tirmidhi, and Sunan Nasai. Online, I want everyone to tell me if he is with us. Okay, so they considered instead Muwatta of Imam Malik. They said Muwatta Imam Malik is better. And that's true. From authenticity wise, Muwatta Imam Malik is much more stronger. Other scholars considered Sunan al Darimi, and this is a book also we will mention. Imam al Darimi, a great scholar also of Hadith, and he compiled the book of Sunan. Yet, eventually, we find Sunan ibn Majah is the one that was the sixth book. Why? The first to count Ibn Majah's book, rahimahullah, as the sixth book is Imam Abu al-Fadl, Muhammad ibn Tahir al-Maqdisi. Imam Abu al-Fadl, in his book, he considered Sunan Ibn Majah the sixth book. Imam Abu al-Fadl, he died in the year 507 of Hijrah. Then after him, Imam Abdul Ghani al-Maqdisi, Abdul Ghani al-Maqdisi, who died in the year 600 of Hijrah, he also considered Sunan Ibn Majah the sixth book. And after that, all scholars considered Sunan Ibn Majah the sixth book. Who is Abdul Ghani al-Maqdisi? Abdul Ghani al-Maqdisi is a very famous scholar. He is a relative of Imam Ibn Qudama rahimahullah. Do you know Ibn Qudama rahimahullah? The author of Al-Mughni the biggest book in Hanbali fiqh. The family of Maqdisi, Ibn Taymi rahimahullah says, they are the most knowledgeable family to inhabit Asham, Damascus, and Bayt al-Maqdis, and Palestine. So Imam Abdul Ghani al-Maqdisi, he wrote a book, this book called Al-Kamal. What's, what's the meaning of Al-Kamal? Kamal in Arabic means perfection. Al-Kamal fi asma' al-rijal. The perfection in mentioning the names of men. What names of men he mentioned? The names of men of six books. Six books. Imam Abdul Ghani al-Maqdisi, he wrote another book. Very beautiful book. Small book. He collected 
425 hadith from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and called it Umdatul Ahkam, the pillar or the essence of rulings. This Umdatul Ahkam has 425 hadith agreed upon by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. So what's the big deal? The big deal is that all these ahadith about the rulings, it is not about adab, etiquettes, it is not about aqidah, it is not about tafsir, it is about fiqh ruling. It starts from at tahara then salah, and so on and so forth. This is the first level for the student of knowledge if he wanted to memorize ahadith al-ahkam. That's where you go. You go to Umdat al-Ahkam. Next, you go to Bulugh al-Maram. Bulugh al-Maram for Ibn Hajar, rahimahullah. Bulugh al-Maram is a bigger book. However, many of the ahadith in Bulugh al-Maram are not authentic. Yet you find Bulugh al-Maram translated to English. And Umdat al-Ahkam, until now, I did not find it translated to English. Although it is smaller and it is stronger. It is the first step. Then we have after... Bulugh al-Maram, we have Umdat al-Ahkam, Bulugh al-Maram, and then we have Muntaqa al-Akhbar. Muntaqa al-Akhbar for the grandfather of Ibn Taymiyyah, Al-Majd Ibn Taymiyyah. And it was explained by Al-Shawkani, Nail al-Awtar, Sharh Muntaqa al-Akhbar, and we have it here. So anyways, this Imam, Abdul Ghani al-Maqdisi, he is the one who considered Ibn Majah, the sixth book of the Sunan. This book, back to his book, Al-Kamal, Fi Asma Rijal, the perfection, in mentioning the names of men, this is about the men of the six books. Again, what are the six books? Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, Sunan al-Tirmidhi, Sunan Abi Dawood, Sunan Nasai, and Sunan Ibn Majah. All the names of the narrators, again, all the names of the narrators in these six books are mentioned in this book. That's why it was called Al-Kamal. So after Al-Kamal, it became like a brand. You want to find a name of a narrator and his hadith is one of these six books, you go straight to this book. After Al-Kamal, another scholar came and he briefed Al-Kamal. Now Al-Kamal, Imagine, you are mentioning the names of all narrators. Not in one book, not in Sahih Bukhari or Sahih Muslim, in all six books. That's a huge work. Imam Al-Mizzi, Abu Al-Hajjaj, Sharaf din Al-Mizzi, he briefed or summarized it in a smaller book. He called it Tahdib Al-Kamal. Tahdib Al-Kamal means briefing that book. This briefing is available nowadays. You know how many volumes? 37 volumes. That's the smaller version of Al-Kamal. That's the smaller version. Then Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, the interpreter of Sahih al-Bukhari, he came and he briefed it. He called it Tahdib al-Tahdib. Then he briefed that book, four volumes in one volume, very big volume, with the names and the ruling of the man. Is he trustworthy? Is he weak? Is he accepted or not? What do we do with all this? Back again to the issue here. Ibn Majah, as I told you, some scholars did not consider Ibn Majah the sixth book. But after those two imams, especially after Abdul Ghani al-Maqdisi, there was no argument. Every single scholar considered Ibn Majah the sixth book. But why? Here comes the question. I already told you, Muwatta, of, Ibn Malik, uh, of Imam Malik rahimahullah is much stronger from authentic perspective, from authenticity, why? why? Why it was not included? Or Sunan al-Darimi? Because Muwatta Imam Malik, although it has very authentic narrations, all of these ahadith are already included in one of the five books. So adding it as a sixth book has no value. We don't need it. It's already included. The same thing of, so with Musnad al-Darimi. While Sunan Ibn Majah, its unique characteristic is that it had many added ahadith. That's the feature of Imam Ibn Majah. 
Imagine, Imam al-Bukhari came, then Imam Muslim, then Abu Dawood, then al-Nasai, then al-Tirmidhi. And Imam ibn Majah after all them, and he mentioned many ahadith that neither one of them mentioned. That's the feature, the main reason why scholars considered Ibn Majah the sixth book of the Sunnah. To show you the value of the book of Ibn Majah, rahimahullah, he showed it to Abu Zur'a. Abu Zur'a al-Razi, very famous scholar of hadith. He was muhaddith, Abu Zur'a al-Razi, who said, I think if people busy themselves with this book, with Sunan Ibn Majah, the masjids will be idle, will become idle. What does that mean? That means the masjid, people will be busy with this book, they don't go to the masjid. Because it is so exciting, it is so beneficial. Some scholars said that's a bit exaggeration. Because they go back to the same city and he wanted to market the book of his fellow, of his colleague. But we don't think so of those great scholars. Yes, maybe there was an exaggeration, but not that much. Also, he said, I doesn't have or I don't see more than 30 week a hadith in his book. So why all this issue? If it's only 30 ahadith, that's nothing, that's a fraction. We have on the other hand, some scholars who said every hadith that is narrated only by Ibn Majah is weak, is not accepted, is rejected. What do you see between the first statement and the second one? One man, one scholar says, it has only 30 ahadith that are weak. Then we have another scholar who says, every single hadith that was narrated only by Ibn Majah is weak. How can we reconcile? We cannot solve this issue unless we check the hadith itself. I agree with you that every single hadith is weak, that's exaggeration. But the difference is huge. The difference is huge between someone who says 30 and someone who says all the hadith. So how can we solve this issue? We came to a study by studying every single hadith. This is what we find. We have the total number of hadith, 4,341 hadith. That's the total number of a hadith in Sunan Ibn Majah. Okay? And that's a good number. Out of these a hadith, how many a hadith are narrated only by Ibn Majah? No one else was able to share him with these a hadith. How many a hadith? We have 1,339. They were narrated only by Ibn Majah. So 3,002 ahadith, Imam Ibn Majah shared the remaining scholars. Imam Bukhari, Muslim, all of them or at least one of them. At least one of them, 3,000 ahadith. So you could say almost three quarters of his book is shared by others. That leaves what? One quarter. 1,339 hadith is narrated only by Ibn Majah. And you could see that the work is not easy for an Imam to come after all those five Imams and to come up with 13, 1,339 hadith. That's, that's a huge work. I'm not sure if you can grasp the significance of the work of Ibn Majah. To come after all these Imams and to, to have 1,339 hadith, only he was able to narrate them, that's a huge work. So let's go back. After, from those 1,339 hadith, we have one imam says, only 30 are weak. And we have another imam says, all of them are weak. Neither one is correct. So what's the correct answer? Here are the statistics, and these are very important statistics. Out of 339 hadith, we have 
428 hadith are authentic. They are accepted. Which tells you the statement that all of them are weak, that's injustice to Imam Ibn Majah, rahimahullah. That's exaggeration. Out of 1,339 hadith, we have 428, they are authentic. And 199 are hasan, which means they are accepted. So that's about half of the ahadith. Still, we have a lot to add to the 30. So we have 428 authentic hadith and we have 199 hadith that are accepted. So in brief, more than half of the ahadith are accepted. That's still a huge effort by Imam Ibn Majah rahimahullah. Then we have three, 613 hadith are weak. 613 hadith are weak. And we have 99 hadith are rejected. What do you mean by rejected? They are very, very weak or they are forged, fabricated, lied against the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So how can we interpret the statement of Abu Zul al-Razi rahimahullah? How can we understand it? He meant by 30 hadith that they are rejected. Not weak, but he meant that they are very, very weak. And you see, 30, 3 times the 30 is 99. And that's what he remembered, maybe. When he said 30, he meant that they are rejected. Which tells you that the other statement is totally wrong. When you say every hadith that is narrated by Ibn Majah alone is weak. What's the correct statement? Half of the ahadith are weak? Yes. Are there very weak ahadith? Yes. But they are not a lot. You could say they, they are less than 10%. Less than 10%. That leaves you 90% of the ahadith of the work of Ibn Majah, rahimahullah, that you could find endorsement or they are automatically accepted. This is a huge work. Another feature for Imam Ibn Majah, rahimahullah, that he has five ahadith in his book narrated through only three narrators. The chain of narrators between him and the Messenger وسلم, has only three men. Again, this is an important quality. Who has three narrators only between him and the Messenger وسلم? Bukhari, how many ahadith? Hmm? 22. What about Imam Muslim? Does he have any hadith with three narrators? No. What about Imam Abu Dawood? Again, no. What about Imam At-Tirmidhi? He has one hadith. Only one. What about An-Nasai? No. So for Imam Ibn Majah rahimahullah, to come and narrate five hadith, that's a huge thing. That's a huge thing. However, however, actually, those five hadith, they are all from the same chain. They are from the same chain. What is that chain? Jubara ibn al-Mughallis. Ibn Majah rahimahullah, narrates from Jubara ibn al-Mughallis. From Kuthayr ibn Sulaym. From Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. Again, what's the chain? Jubara ibn al-Mughallis. From Kuthayr ibn Sulaym, from Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. So how many people between Imam ibn Majah rahimahullah and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa Three only. All those five ahadith, like that. Three of those ahadith, they are narrated in the book of foods, Kitab al about food. One of them is narrated in the book of Zuhd. How to be ascetic. That's the meaning of Zuhd. One hadith is narrated in the book of medicine. Kitab al-Tib. So the total is how much? Five ahadith. However, actually, this chain is a weak chain. 
Jubara and Kathir, both of them are weak. Both of them are weak. Which means, what about those five ahadith? Are they authentic or weak? They are weak. Except for the last hadith. The last hadith actually is accepted. Why? Because it was endorsed by another chain. It was narrated in Sunan Imam At-Tirmidhi. And we will come to this hadith. Lastly, in the introduction to Sunan Ibn Majah rahimahullah, we have commentary. One of these books is Misbah as zujaja Misbah as zujaja fi Sunan Ibn Majah. Again, look at the rhythm. They rhyme. That's the work of the scholars. They say Misbah as zujaja This is for Imam Suyuti, the famous Imam who died in the year 911, 911. Imam al Suyuti, he died in the year 911. He explained Sunan ibn Majah. And there is another book called Matamassu ilayhi al Haja. Look, all of them are in the rhythm. Aun al Ma'bud, Sharh Sunan Abi Dawood. Fath al Bari, Sharh Sahih al Bukhari. Misbah al Zujaja, Sharh Sunan ibn Majah. There is another book also talked about the ahadith that were narrated only by ibn Majah. How many hadith? 1,339 hadith. That's the book only. These are the works on Sunan Ibn Majah. So what about the story of this hadith? What is this hadith that is in the book of medicine? This hadith is narrated by Anas Ibn Malik radiallahu an, and in Sunan Al-Tirmidhi it is narrated by Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma. What does this hadith say? Online, are you with us? Alia Bazira only. Why, why this late response? What is Suhair? Okay, anyways. What does this hadith say? This hadith says, when the Prophet وسلم, ascended to heavens in Al-Isra and Al-Miraj, he did not pass by any level of the heavens except that they told him, to command his ummah with copying. What do you mean by copying? Hmm? Blood copying. Yeah. Hijama. This is the hadith. This hadith is authentic. It shows you the significance of copying. That the Prophet ﷺ, every time he goes to one of the heavens, the, 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 the people, the residents of that heavens, they would tell the Messenger ﷺ, O oh Muhammad, command your people, Instruct them to perform hijama. You know how the hijama is performed? With small cuts and you put the sucking cup and the bad blood comes out. It is very healthy treatment. And it doesn't have any side effects. Actually, nowadays, in Saudi Arabia, for instance, in hospitals, they have a separate section for hijama. So this concludes, inshallah, our session for today, for Sunan Ibn Majah. Is there any questions? Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhumah. So it's different chain, but the same hadith. That's what made the hadith authentic because it was endorsed by another chain. By that chain itself, it is weak. Any other questions? Okay, hada wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.